have no idea how I'm about to execute this, but I've got 10 yards of blue velvet. And we're making that Elsa dress from Olaf's Frozen Adventure that has a little white furry thing and a long cape. I have the cape material, but that might not be included in this video. It might be a separate video. Anyways, um, let's just dive right into it. In this house, we craft in pajamas. Elsa's dress in the movie has a very like elegant, slim fit to it, which I love, but at the same time, I wanna add more drama to the dress that I'm gonna make. So I have this dress that I made forever ago for a Legend of Zelda cosplay. And it's got like princess seams up top and kind of like a wide flared out bottom. I definitely wanna try this on and see if this pattern will kind of work for my vision because if not, then I really truly will be starting from square run and I really don't wanna start from square one. So I'm gonna change out of my pajamas, try the dress on and see what happens. It's I, Zelda. Princess of wherever Zelda's princess of. Okay, how do I feel about this? It's a little tight, but because the velvet is stretch velvet, I think that's actually gonna be a good thing. I would do it without the straps, but I put the straps on anyways just to test the fit of everything. Honestly, I'm a little surprised this whole thing fits because I made this for like me when I was like 30 pounds lighter and yeah, so this is a win. This is a huge win. The silhouette, I wish I could show you better. And, and quite a wide base. And then I'll just add like a long train. <sighs> oh my gosh. Love my pants on because this is completely see-through. I think we've got a winner. I think this is gonna work just fine. Clearly I have made this successfully before, well, semi-successfully, cause look at this. This was before I owned a serger and before I knew what a proper facing was supposed to look like. Anyways. I went upstairs and took this video in the mirror just to kind of show you guys a full body look of what the dress looks like. I think this is gonna be just fine. I'll make the bottom a little bit longer and adjust the top, but it's pretty much it. Zooming over to my pattern stash to see if I even have this pattern, which I'm pretty sure I do. Ah, it's right there. Perfect. I thought I could keep my hair in that ponytail and I was very wrong. So this is Simplicity 8113. This is the Zelda dress that I tried to make. This was maybe 2017. No, it was definitely 2017 because I remember I, no, you know what, Never mind. It was 2017. I love this dress pattern. I love the princess seams about it. I love how full the bottom of the skirt gets. Maybe like here-ish, I can show a picture of the Elsa dress and kind of show you my idea as far as like the shape and silhouette that I want to use for the costume. This is the fabric that I have. It is a stretch velvet and I've got 10 yards of. On the back of the pattern, it says that for a size 14, which is what I'm gonna make, even though I think I, I think I made the Zelda dress in a size 12, but I'm gonna make this one in a size 14. That way I kind of have a little bit more control over how much I can take in and how much I can let out. And you know, if life changes, I can accommodate for that. But it says that for the dress in a size 14, I need eight and a quarter yards. That information is found on the back of a packet. I'm not gonna explain that because there's other videos that can do that and this is not that video. But I have 10 yards, so my thinking is I can just make quite a, maybe like a yard long train on the back of it. That would be ideal because I love really long, ridiculous trains. I'm probably shooting myself in the foot because I'm planning on taking this to the ice castles to shoot and I don't, really want anything dragging on the ground while I'm there because it's gonna be a busy weekend, but I'm doing it anyways. I mean, try and stop me. I've, this train has left the station. The first thing I like to look at when I'm about to use a commercial pattern is the packet inside that shows you all the pieces it contains. I like to mark out which pattern pieces I will be using and then keep track of them as I'm cutting them out. And honestly, sometimes I get a little confused because sometimes the pattern pieces look so similar and I can't quite tell what's what, but I do eventually figure it out. The packet is important. 
Welcome to my least favorite part of using a commercial pattern, which is just cutting the pattern out. I feel like it just takes so long and the pattern paper is so fragile, like you can rip it on accident and like, then you have to tape it together and it's a little nightmare. This particular pattern instructs you to cut out like an extra piece to tape onto another piece and you pretty much just map out these little zodiac killer symbols and then tape the one piece to the other piece. If that didn't make sense, that's okay because this is not a tutorial. This is uh, just me figuring things out as I go and doing my best. Pattern paper is like tissue paper. It's so fragile and you have to be super, super careful. I've definitely ripped straight into a bodice pattern before and just kind of demolished it. So heads up on that. This pattern has a couple of those little tapey together pieces that I was telling you about. I like to tape the front and the back. Maybe that's just because I am a little neurotic about it. Also, I typically use scotch tape, not masking tape. But hey, you do what you can with what you got, right? Another thing that I like to do when I'm working with a commercial pattern is take notes on how I want to change the pattern and then keep track of if I'm actually applying those notes or not because this pattern has a deep neckline, which I don't want to cut a deep neckline, and it has these shoulder straps, which we don't really need. So I just need to cut it straight across. I made a note saying like, hey, don't forget to do this and I always check that before I cut things out. Same with the back piece here. I don't need this upper piece that's like kind of above the armpits. I want to apply that length to the bottom of the skirt. And remember how I said that I had 10 yards of this blue velvet? 10 yards of velvet is kind of heavy you guys. Like it was a workout to whip it around and kind of like look at it. I feel like a bougie fisherman casting a velvet net and look how long this velvet is. It just keeps going and going and going. It goes all the way from one room of my house to the other. Like this is a lot of fabric and we've got a lot of work to do. And you guys, I am totally that kind of person that if I don't just start going, I kind of psych myself out of getting things done. And then I procrastinate and then I don't ever end up doing anything. So I got to work laying down all my pattern pieces just to see how much fabric I actually have. And don't worry, I totally have enough. Started cutting things out. Everything's going super, super well. Checking my notes, making sure that like everything is lined up. Uh, I have these rulers, if you can see those like gigantic long measuring sticks. I'm using those as guides to extend the skirts out just a little bit more. I'm trying to utilize as much fabric as I possibly can to make this as wide of a skirt as it can be. Because we want to bring the what? The drama in this costume. And I will not lie to you, using these measuring sticks and kind of eyeballing the length of the train feels like costume witchcraft. It doesn't feel like it should work, but it kind of does. I told myself that I would make tacos after I finished cutting all this out and there's only one more panel to cut out, but it's the back panel. It's the one that I just haven't figured out yet. And I am feeling very much, let's just do it, cut it and make it work. But I'm like, no, just take 10 seconds and think about it. But then again, tacos. But then I'm like, are they gonna taste as good if I know that I royally screwed this up? No, no, they're not, but I am hungry. But it only take me like 10 seconds to think and like cut the whole thing out. So I guess that's what I'm doing. I just spent half an hour watching TikToks and not making tacos or cutting out the last part of the dress. Why? <laughs> Here's my dilemma. I I'm scared. I'm scared of ruining this project. I'm scared of cutting out the fabric and then like totally messing it up. And then there's like this extra part over here that I don't have enough fabric in this panel to actually cut stuff out of. So I know I'm gonna have to use like witchcraft costume magic to make it work. So here's what I ended up doing and let's see if I can even explain it. I'm going to cut out this extra triangle piece that, that the scissors are pointing at. And then I'm gonna just sew that onto the two back pieces, but not all the way to the top. Kind of like where you're small of your back or maybe your butt crack is and hope for the best. Butt crack magic. Oh god, it sounds bad. Because it is bad. At this point, there truly is no going back. Everything is cut out, even the two like witchcraft pieces. I slowly pin everything together, partially because I am still nervous that it's not going to work, and then also because I'm watching an intense movie, and then it becomes time to surge everything together. I decided not to sew it. I'm just gonna go for it and surge it together. It is what it is. I have faith that it will work out, but I mean, there's always that chance that it's just gonna be a gigantic pile of crap and then you're like, I spent all my time and effort and money on this project only to, you know, completely bind the two pieces together and then it didn't even work out. Spoiler alert, this one does work out. In a generic long sleeve sleeve pattern that I pulled out of my stash, I cut out two long sleeves and surged them together. 
Well, not together, but like, you know what I'm saying, I attach them to the body of the dress. And this particular clip right here is to remind us all that this is not a quick process. Sewing and serging and cutting and everything takes forever. This is real time. It's not fast. So remember the witchcraft patterning that I did yesterday? Well, it totally paid off because this worked. Every part of it worked. Everything fit together and I just used my brain. Like, I can't believe this. If you want to see me make these costumes in real time, head over to my Instagram, Alexandria Lane, where I give you real time updates. But seriously, look at that back panel. I just made that. I just figured it out. And look at how kind of even the hem already is on this dress. Like, can you believe that? Trimmy trim up those little sleeves. But for the most part, I'm stunned. I'm shocked. I'm good, you guys. I very much just eyeballed the length of the dress when I was cutting out the actual panels. And in keeping with that same spirit of chaotic creation, here I am just eyeballing the actual cutting of the hem. Uh, <laughs> I should not do it this way, but it does seem to work. So this is what we've got. Oh, if I could just stop covering. Oh, because wait, there we go. I have all the silver trim and I think I'm just going to go ahead and use it on this costume. My heart and soul wants to just like make every single tiny little detail, but because I have a major deadline for this costume, it needs to be done. So we're going with this like store-bought tool. Tool? No, what is it? Trim? This store-bought trim lace. I think I got it from Amazon. It's been in my stash for a while, so you know what? I've got a ton of it. Let's just use it up and go from there. I mean, I will still probably add some jewels and gems like on the bottom and up the top of the dress, but for the most part, I think we're gonna go with this. Before actually attaching the lace stuff onto the bottom of the dress, I decided to trim up the top just to make sure that it was squared away and kind of ready for its own embellishments because eventually I will be adding a bunch of white fur onto the top of this dress, so I'm just making sure that it's ready to go. But now I'm just making sure that the entire bottom of the dress is surged and ready for lace. And folks, remember to clean out your serger after doing a big project or just, you know, every time you use it because it collects so much crap up in there. Once that was done, I pinned the entire length of the lace all the way around the bottom of the dress. This is about eight yards of lace stuff. So this took a long while to do. I really felt like I was on a roll. I got everything pinned on, ready to sew. I even started sewing it. I started sewing the lace onto the bottom of the dress. But do you know what I didn't do? I didn't hem the dress. I didn't hem this. It's just a raw edge. It's not raw, it's surged, but like, ugh, it's not protected enough. So now I have to unpick everything. I have to unpin all the lace, hem this dress, and then pin the lace back on and sew it. It's lame, but it's what I'm doing. And it was lame. It took me forever to put all those pins in and then take them all out and then do the whole hem all the way around the entire eight yard train bottom of the skirt thingy, but it was totally worth it because of the extra protection. And with that being done, I pinned all eight yards of trim back onto the hem of the dress and started stitching it on. And you guys, this was a long, tedious process. It literally is. Put needle down, sew two inches, lift presser foot, pivot, put the presser foot back down, sew two more inches, lift presser foot, pivot again, put presser, presser foot down, I can't even get through it, sew two inches, and it just goes like this for eight yards, and it feels like it's never gonna end. So, here are my best tips for sewing on trim like this. Tip number one, I put pink colored pins to mark each yard. Then when I get to a pink pin, I stand up, stretch for a minute, and give myself a little break, then start going again. Tip number two, Put on a movie, a TV show, a podcast, or an audiobook to listen to while you work. It definitely helps to keep part of your brain occupied during part of this process. And tip number three, remember that when you have the entire bottom section of trim sewn on, you still have to stitch on the top portion of the trim, and that this everlasting hell of short stitches isn't everlasting at all, so don't give up. Even though I still plan to add more lace appliques, I desperately needed a break from them, so I swapped over to making the white trim for the top of the dress. I measured how long I need the white fur to be around the neckline and arm holes of the dress, and then I drew out an elongated tube shape onto the back of the fur fabric. I used a sharp X-Acto knife to cut the shape out of the back of the fur. Cutting fur like this helps manage the amount of shedding that inevitably happens when you work with fuzzy fabrics. If you just cut it with scissors, you're gonna get a lot of shed and a really, really choppy edge. 
Then, as normal, I used the first piece as a pattern for the second piece. I traced around it and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife as well. Even though the two pieces are mirrors of each other's, it's important that the fur is going in the same direction for each piece. And then I pinned and sewed the two pieces together at the backs. I've been sewing a lot of fur lately because it's winter time, and you'll notice that I am no longer sewing over the pins. Yeah, I busted one too many needle doing that, and now I'm just gonna try to avoid that practice altogether. By this point, I had a long tube with tapered ends. I pinned everything with the right sides together, but then added a gap in the middle section. This is so that I have a space to turn it all right sides out once I'm done sewing this piece. I turned the tube right sides out and then used the non-hooky end of the crochet hook to poke the ends all the way out. I also used the crochet hook to pull out some of the fur from the seams. Doing this helps add fullness to the fur. And if you don't pull the fur out of the seam, then you're gonna have an entire bald section along the seam line that's, you know, just bald. Then I pinned the fur to the top of the dress very carefully, and I decided it was time to try it on. So let's look and see what we've got. This was the first time that I put the dress on and actually felt like I'd captured my vision. I'm definitely feeling like a winter angel in blue velvet, and I am obsessed. Completely obsessed with it. I, it, I, just everything. Just everything. After trying it on, I decided that the fur part needed to be more full. So I stuffed it with tulle to give it the shape I wanted, but without adding a lot of weight. Then I sewed it closed. Up until this point, the fur was just attached with straight pins, and now that I had it the way that I wanted it, I stitched it onto the dress with my machine, being very careful not to catch the wispy pieces of fur along the way. This is what we've got. I'm liking this. This is good. This is great. I've just got to cut the arms into like a little point. Love the bottom of it. I have a corset on underneath, but then underneath that I have a quilted petticoat. I'm not loving the silhouette of the quilted petticoat. It's just a little bulky, so I might not wear that. But so far so good and we just gotta keep working. I knew that I wanted to wear a corset under the dress, but I needed to make a few decisions that ultimately boiled down to this. Number one, I don't have time to make my own corset, so this one from Amazon will have to do. And number two, I don't want to sew the corset into the dress because if I do that, then I either have to lace it up while the dress is on my body and attached to the dress, or I have to cut the dress open and figure out closure options, and that sounded like it was gonna take too much time, so I decided to just wear the corset under the dress and call it good without any added alterations. Moving on to the part of the video where I cut the wrist part of the sleeve into a V shape. I marked it with pins, and then marked it with pins again to show like, you know, guidelines for the V shape, and then I just hoped for the best and hoped that they would match because I just started chopping. Cutting one sleeve is easy enough, but getting the other one to match is a whole different ball game. And sleeves are like one of the smallest little details on a costume, but if you have one sleeve that is noticeably longer than the other because you just weren't paying attention when you cut it, that's a problem. For me, that's a problem anyways. I got gigantic albatross arms. People are gonna notice if one is much longer than the other. Elsa's dress has designs at the front, so that's what we're gonna work on next. I carefully cut out pieces from the leftover lace trim that I used on the dress's hem, and then I started laying them out to make a sort of collage applique. Once I had a layout that I liked, I started pinning them onto the dress with straight pins. It took a few attempts to get it to look right, but I eventually settled on this design. I found that overlaying the lace on top of one another just a little bit gave the design a more cohesive look. And you guys, the first time I laid them out, it looked like a bunch of silver pineapples stuck to blue velvet. So definitely play around with the placement when using appliques because even small adjustments can make a big difference. This next part is probably not revolutionary for a lot of you people out there, but it was revolutionary for me. So I will share what I learned. At first, when I started sewing on these additional appliques, I was just using like a regular zipper foot. I don't know why I chose this one, I just thought it would work well. Uh, and turns out it's tricky, it's really complex. I kept having to start and stop, it kept getting caught on things. And so what I ended up doing is I swapped out that presser foot for my free motion presser foot, and I just absolutely blasted through these appliques. And it was kind of fun. It was like the sewing version of driving Mario Kart. I just followed along the edge of each applique, and because my top thread matched the silver appliques so well, it really didn't matter if I got a little messy or uneven because you literally can't see the mistakes. Like, you guys, I cannot sing the praises of this free motion presser foot enough. I got it off of Amazon a couple of weeks ago so that I could free motion quilt the petticoat that I was going to wear with this costume. Now it's kind of looking like I'm not going to wear that petticoat with it because it just is so bulky underneath the dress, but that's besides the point. The point I'm trying to make is that this presser foot was a great investment for my sewing stuff. There. The last part of this dress process is simple. 
bedazzle everything. I drew out a template because Elsa's dress has these little arrow shaped thingies on it. I'll put a picture. There you go. You can see it. And I just wanted to get kind of close to what those look like. And I decided that using blue, light blue colored gems was going to be my best option because I didn't think I'd be able to find the exact shape of like glue on crystals in time for the photo shoot. So I ultimately just used a white sewing pencil to trace on those designs. And then I just filled it in with glue and then one by one tweezered those tiny little crystals onto the shape. And as always, tedious process plus me equals watch a movie. Uh, I watched like three movies while I was doing this because it took so long. And at first I didn't even know if this was really gonna work because my glue was kind of old. And I was like, what if this glue is just kind of crusty and dusty and gross and old and doesn't even hold these crystals on? Well, you know what? It did work. It did hold those crystals on. Shout out to you, dusty, crusty glue bottle. I will be replacing you because I don't really trust you, but for now, it's not bad. Not bad, you little champ. Fun fact about these blue crystals, I originally bought this kit because I was going to do a Elton John at Dodgers Stadium cosplay, and I thought this was going to be enough to cover the entire costume. I'll put a picture up. Um, there is absolutely no way that this is enough crystals to do even a tiny portion of that costume. I love you, Elton John. I let all those light blue crystals dry overnight, and then the next morning I started pinning on these bigger crystals to try and decide what shape I wanted them to look like. I definitely wanted to avoid two things. Number one, gems on my nipples. And number two, gems on my belly button. It did take some time to decide the placement of all of these. And luckily these are sew on gems, so they have little holes in them so I could like push pins through them. Ultimately, I did end up just hot gluing them on for time's sake, but I will eventually go through and stitch each of them on. And I think now is a good time to just mention that I also put bigger gems down each sleeve. This was the last part of the dress that I needed to do before I could move on to anything else. So I wanted to make sure it looked nice. I am loving how this is looking. This dress is looking pretty good. I like the placement of the rhinestones, the crystals, but it's time to add a few more. And I just found a couple packs of these Swarovski crystals and I'm like, I have them. I'm gonna put them on. You know what bums me out though is that you can't just buy Swarovskis in these little packs anymore. I don't know why they changed it, but like I can't just go to the store and buy a pack of Swarovskis. I've got like a couple right here, like these three packs. It does bum me out that I can't buy them the way that I used to. I don't even know if they have an online store or anything, but it is saving me a lot of money. So thank you and no thank you. As far as gluing on the Swarovski crystals, I used gem tack for glue, and I tried to glue the gems on more densely towards the top of the dress, and then glue on less and less and less as I reached the bottom. I really had to edit my crystal placement here because I have a tendency to go way, way, way overboard when it comes to sparkle. And this version of Elsa's winter dress has a very noticeable sparkle gradient down the front of the dress that I did not want to mess up. So I tried extra, extra hard to make it look soft and nice. I've decided it's finally time to start on the cape part of this. I've got my, and that's where this video is going to end. And that's for two reasons. The first being, I'm the one that gets to decide how long these videos are and when to cut them off. And the second one being that my absolute prehistoric raggedy dinosaur of a laptop cannot manage a video much longer than this. It sounds like a jet engine that's going to explode. And I would know because I worked in aerospace for like three years. I'm recording this now because my laptop needs to cool down for a minute. The bottom of it is so hot that if I flipped it over, I could bake a cookie on top of it. It's, you can't even touch it right now. It's just absolutely scorching. It is scorching. Um, it is not good. So I've decided to split this project into making the dress and then making the cape. Hopefully the cape video will be out soon. I'm going to try and edit it today and put it all together. But it, again, it really does depend on how much my laptop can handle, which at this point doesn't seem like much. So wish me luck. I am also just gonna take this time and maybe like insert what the dress looks like. The whole thing is done. The whole outfit is done. I've already taken pictures of it. We went to the ice castles and it was so much fun. It was really, really cold, but totally worth it. I am gonna wait until the end of the cape video to show you like all of the pictures just because I haven't edited them yet. There's like 5,000 pictures to go through and I just haven't made it through all of them yet. But I did wanna try and get this video out as soon as possible 
because there were a couple of people at the ice castles that inquired about like, what are you doing here? Why do you look so <laughs> amazing? And I told them like, you know, I make videos and stuff. So if you were at the ice castles and you're watching this now, say hi. Um, it was nice talking to you. If you enjoyed this video, this is your formal invitation to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon, hopefully really soon because I have more Elsa content coming. I made kind of a vlog video of doing the wig, which was an absolute disaster, by the way. And hopefully that will be up soon as well. And remember, in this house, we craft in pajamas. <laughs>